Ask Reddit by my Tilly Belly 107. Why were you ashamed of yourself like never before? I was never the most patient person and I despise being late for things. My wife, kids and I were going to walk down and hang out at a neighbor's house for the evening. They were taking forever and my wife kept stalling and we were going to be late. I yelled at all of them to hurry up and proceeded to be pissed off the whole walk down. When we walked in, it was a surprise party for me. She was delaying because they hadn't finished the decorations yet. Felt like a complete piece of shit. This was 10 years ago and it still bothers me. Definitely taught me to be a more patient person though. Friends threw a surprise birthday party for me, and to ensure I didn't walk in too early. They got the kids from upstairs a bucket of filled water balloons and had them chase me around while they got set up. After my father passed, it hit me how little time I had spent with him. I'll never get that time back, and if I allow myself to think about it too much, it rips me to shreds. I loved him so much, but I was fresh out of the house and living with my boyfriend and trying to be an adult. My father was battling cancer, and I could have gone to visit him so many times, but I didn't. If I could go back in time and scream in my own face to sit with him every day, I'd do it in a heartbeat. He deserved so much better. The 25th of June was the 7th anniversary of his death. This time of year always hurts extra. Always make time for the people you love. You are not guaranteed tomorrow, and regret is a potent poison. I skipped a visit to my grandpa and amp, never got to make it up. Those things you can't even apologize for are haunting. When I was 12 or 13 I used to steal money from my grandma. I used to take advantage of the fact she was old and not very mobile and take money from her purse or from an envelope she kept in her wardrobe. Not huge amounts of money, perhaps 150 pounds in total spread across a couple of years. She was the loveliest, kindest person I've ever met and I never heard her say a bad word about anyone or complain when she was in poor health. The worst part is I think that perhaps she knew but wouldn't have said anything as she wouldn't have wanted to get me in trouble. She passed over 20 years ago, I was with her when she went. I'm 47 now but still think about it often and am so ashamed of it. When I was a kid I stole a 5 pound note from my mom's purse, thinking she wouldn't notice it. A few hours later she asked me if I'd taken a 5 pound note from her purse and I said no and she looked really worried about it. We struggled for money a lot when I was a kid so that 5 pounds was probably a big deal for her to lose. I felt really guilty about it for ages and a couple of months later I put 5 pounds back in her purse 2 or 3 times to make up for it. When I was 19 I fell for one of those fake check scams. My mom had to help me pay the bank $2500. I've since paid her back but I was so ashamed of myself. I had never broken down and sobbed so hard in front of someone. I was about the same age when I decided to fuck with one of those fake check scammers. I did decide to deposit the check, which I knew would bounce. I made sure to not spend any of the money that was falsely in my account, and thought it'd be interesting to see exactly how the process worked. Then, Chase cancelled my account for depositing a fake check and sent me a check for my legitimate balance. Wasn't expecting that shit. Somehow, I still got screwed over by the scammer even though I was trying to fuck with the scammer. Few years back went to visit my sister, at the time I reached at her home I had to pee really bad, I was so full I was walking funny. My sister, her husband and his mother came to greet me at the door, I said I need to use the toilet immediately and we all entered the house, just then my little niece rushed from inside and hugged me. Her head hit my lower abdomen really hard and I peed right there. I did stop as quickly as possible but I had a big wet patch on my pant. At least it was just on the one pant. My grandmother was my favorite person in the world. Since I was a baby, she sent one real pearl that Christmas. When I was in my early 20s, she made them into a real pearl necklace. She passed away not too long after that. A few years later, I went to a school competition and lost. That. Necklace. 
I still feel physically ill when I think about it. Eater, y'all, thank you. So many supportive comments. To those of you who have had the same experience, big hugs to you. I can only imagine how much that hurts. I'm so sorry. Spend some time thinking about how she would react if you were able to tell her. Maybe walk through the conversation in your mind. I doubt she would be angry. She wouldn't love you any less. Your relationship wasn't about the pearls. Maybe you could start gifting yourself one pearl every year on her birthday and start a new necklace in her honor. When I was 18 I started stealing money out of the register at the mom and pop store where I worked I can't even tell you why I did it I had never stolen even a candy bar before but I started stealing large amounts of cash by falsifying refunds on the register it went on for about a year and then one day I was called into the office where two detectives were waiting I had stolen over $17,000 in a year that wasn't the shameful part. The shameful part was telling my dad that I was being charged with 7 felonies but that if he paid the grocery store back they would drop all charges. I don't know how he ever forgave me for this. He is the most honorable person I know and the look of disgust on his face when I told him has stuck with me forever. And of course he paid them back for me. I'm 31 now and have mostly paid him back but it is still something that makes me really upset. I don't think I've ever forgiven myself for being so stupid. Despite his disappointment he bailed you out, that's a good dad. What's your relationship with him like now? I realized my dad had been standing in the doorway watching me dramatically shadow box to tub thumping on the radio in my bedroom when I was in 4th or 5th grade. Getting knocked down, getting up again, the whole deal. My dad's a caring person and there was no reason to be so embarrassed, but I remember feeling wicked fucking stupid. As a parent myself, these are the absolute best moments. Guaranteed your dad was drinking it all and had good memories. I did a bunch of drugs and drank a lot when I was younger. I ended up in the hospital as a result. I remember having to explain to the doctor all the drugs I took, how often, how much I drank. I knew he'd probably heard it all before and was just trying to understand my condition. I sincerely doubt he was judging me too harshly, or maybe he was, who knows? Regardless, I just remember feeling immense shame when I was explaining that I basically hadn't given a fuck about myself for the last 13ish years. That was a lonely place. How are you doing now? I door dashed myself 4 sets of Twinkies from the gas station down the street. While this is in fact terrible. I salute you, first world enjoyer. Went to the bank and the lady who was helping me told me about a savings account I could set up and the benefits of it. Didn't really care about it but she seemed nice so I thought yeah sure why not. She wanted to show how easy it was to do so she asked to use my phone and do it and I said sure I just held my phone flat on my palm facing towards her while she went on safari and then boom. Ebony wants it in all three holes with thumbnail big as fuck on the screen because I forgot to switch from private to normal. She created a new tab really fast and done what she intended to do and we both acted like she didn't see what she saw but I died inside and couldn't stop thinking about it for the following days. Oh god that's horrifying. One time me and my boyfriend at the time worked at a grocery store and this old man came in once and walked up to my boyfriend and asked him to clear his porn history from his phone in case he died soon. He couldn't figure it out and didn't want anyone to find it. I wasn't standing there at the time but he came to find me immediately to tell me about it. I had the flu with a crazy fever and went to Target to pick up cold medicine and Gatorade and discovered that I was talking to myself when the lady in line in front of me turned around and looked at me horrified. I have no idea what I said, but she grabbed her as yet unloaded cart and skedaddled off to another register. There was a guy behind me in line and refused to tell me what I must have said, just laughed at me the whole time he was in line. This reminds me of the time I was sick as shit in Target with my mom as a kid. I was super congested and had a horrible cough. I started going into a coughing fit while we were in line for the pharmacy to pick up my meds. There were a lot of people in line. I coughed so bad and couldn't stop and eventually gagged up a big wad of phlegm that I uncontrollably spat on the floor in front of everyone. 
I forgot about this until I read this comment. Fuck. That was shameful. I felt so disgusting to have done that in front of everyone. My alcoholism. It debilated me. It ruined friendships, my health, my self-worth, my ability to live a normal life. I hated every single second of it when I wasn't ass over tea kettle drunk. Even then I hated it but it was more tolerable because I was too drunk to give a shit about it. Fast forward to now, been sober since the 13th of August 2021. Spent 97 days in a rehab facility. Took back my life. Got a job working third shift, being dependable every day. I've gained the respect and trust of my father and mother and close friends all over again. I just went to a wedding almost a month ago and had so much fun being the one sober person there. I still have a lot of things to work on but goddamn I am doing so much better than I was, and I can't look back and let the past ruin what I have now. I can't regain all I lost but I can at least forge forward and make the best of what I have. It's an ongoing shame. I put myself in serious debt over the past couple years. While I do pay everything on time, I can't get approved anywhere to help put my debt into a lump sum. I recently picked up a car payment as well for my mother as my grandfather was paying it for her, but he recently passed. It's a struggle, so when I finally do pay everything off I will most likely cry tears of joy. Deleted. Puking while shitting myself outside Paris CDG airport because of food poisoning was a low point in my life NGL. Bubble goods during a road trip. Had to pull over and poop in the bushes. People were driving by and saw me. I will never recover from that embarrassment. Edit. Sounds like a lot of you share the same experience I did. I got the bubble goods while on a loaded tour bus in the Jordanian desert. I had to ask them to stop a sap, and a sap happened to be at a police station in the middle of nowhere. This being the rural Middle East, they did not have the toilets that I am accustomed to in the US. They had squatty potties, with a wall faucet and a garden watering bucket instead of toilet paper. In my pooper stupor, I had to run back out of the police station, where I saw my tour guide running toward me with a pack of tissues. He had apparently anticipated my need. The entire bus had to wait for me while I defiled the inside of that police station bathroom in such a way that I'm surprised I wasn't arrested. Talk about a walk of shame back to the bus. Deleted. Fuck, you brought out a memory I completely forgot about, and now I feel terrible. Very similar, my dad asked if I wanted to see an Illini football game, Illinois College, with him, my friend, and my friend's dad. I just didn't want to go, I was maybe 15 and I had a fuck ton of anxiety towards anything in public I hadn't experienced before. I'll have to get him tickets to go when I'm home next. I mean, nobody wants to admit they ate 9 cans of ravioli, but I did. I'm ashamed of myself. The first can doesn't count, then you get to the second and third, fourth and fifth I think I burnt with a blowtorch, and then I just kept eating. Shit storms are coming. Was on opiates heroin in late teens to mid twenties. Life is better now, 12 years without that shit this August. This happened in like, second grade and it still haunts me lol. I can't remember the exact conversation, but I boastfully informed my friend that I had basically been at a concert because my mom was at one while pregnant with me, later found out this isn't even true. It was actually while pregnant with my brother. Anyway, my friend was like, Oh yeah? What concert? I panicked because I had absolutely no idea, and blurted out the first name that came to mind, James Bond. She gave me a weird look, and changed the topic. I later found out who, or what James Bond even is, I have no idea why I thought he was a musician, and proceeded to wish my mother had never been pregnant with me at all. Has this friend completely forgotten about this exchange years ago? No doubt. Do I still occasionally think about it while lying awake at night? Yes. Asked my friends if Michael Jackson was on American Idol once and they never let it go. I was 19, 
living on my own and making $8.50 an hour. Life was hard. I stole some old computer memory from the place I was working and sold it. Made about $300, 100k SQFT warehouse full of computer stuff, they had probably written it off and it would have ended up trash. I rationalized the hell out of it. That was a lot of years ago, but I still feel like complete shit about it. I've only ever told one other person what I did. You kept a roof over your head and fed yourself. Maybe if you have enough now, you could make amends by doing the same for others. Donate or volunteer at a food bank or homeless shelter. Then forgive yourself. My mom died about two years ago. When I went through her stuff to see what to keep and what to throw away I found various divorce papers, one of them detailing how both my parents blamed the other for my autism. Neither of them ever mentioned anything about this over the course of the divorce of course and have always affirmed they loved me, but I've always felt somewhat ashamed of my autism and wished that my parents had gotten a normal kid and reading that they blamed each other just filled me with shame for just existing. I'm so sorry. I couldn't quit drinking alcohol until it almost killed me and ruined my marriage. I've been sober for 8ish months now, and I feel great. I also quit the smokes too after 23 years and I can breathe much better. I got a Christmas present from my grandparents who weren't poor but weren't particularly well off when I was like, 5 or 6 I would guess. It was a magic set and I told them I don't even like magic, my brother does. I don't know what happened next but that memory flashes back to me from time to time and I'm always filled with shame. I miss them terribly and hope they forgot about it because I never have. My stepdad used to beat the living hell out of me. We're talking like I had to skip school sometimes to hide the bruises. When it got bad enough I called the cops and he killed himself after he posted bail. My mother has plainly told me it was my fault my two little sisters no longer have a father. I have carried that guilt and shame around my entire life until it became who I was. Therapy is helping though. I'd look none of this is your fault in any way he was a horrible piece of shit who deserved to die you should have called the cops long before then your mom is toxic as well for blaming you and you should cut her off and the two girls wouldn't have had a father, they would have had an abusive. Terrible person hovering over them it's good that he's gone and you don't deserve any blame. I once puked all over the dude sitting next to me at a party. We were just chilling and drinking. I even turned my head to puke on him. Guess I was too nervous to ask for a bucket and though I could hold it down. Poor dude. Deleted. Wait your friend fucked his twin sister? When I was in my teens I was very angry and stupid after losing my mom to cancer at 13. I embezzled over 20k dollars from my father's company. Instead of pressing charges he just kicked me out of the house. I then spent the next 3 years on the streets with nowhere to live, my fault, just stating the facts. Took me over 10 years to repair the relationship with my father, and now that I'm in my mid 40s, we are best friends. But that shit still keeps me up at night. I have tried to pay him back now that I'm settled into a career but he won't accept it. Just demons I'll have to deal with I guess. I sent nudes with my face in them then and I did the kid he made a fake account and got all of my information, my school, and my family members and threatened to leak if I didn't keep sending pics I eventually told my mother which was absolutely humiliating I blocked his fake account and prayed that he wouldn't leak. He didn't thank god. When I was 10 or 11 I shot dead a completely innocent bird with a soft air gun and that is something I thought I, and my then friend, would never speak of again. Which I haven't, till now. This shame will never pass. And I deserve that. Did something similar around the same age. We just finished airsofting in the field behind my friend's house and there was a lizard on a rock next to their pool probably 50 feet away. I just meant to shoot by it to scare it, but I actually shot it right on the head and it fell in the pool dead. My friends thought I was really cool and had super good aim because I meant to shoot it, but inside I felt really bad. Still do. Deleted. 
Every day is new with new decisions to make. You cannot change the past but you can use it to guide your future self. I hope you find peace with your past and feel good about every decision you make from here out. I ripped up a poem my spouse wrote in anger. My spouse read back a poem I wrote to her when we started dating. That was very embarrassing. Recently came to the realization that I have not been good to or for any of the women in my life. Not in an abusive or physically hurtful way, but in how I've treated them and taken them for granted. I've never been fully present or supportive of any of them, and I've never been honest about my feelings with anyone. I'm a 33 year old man and only just now starting to emotionally develop. I'm completely clueless, scared out of my mind, and completely alone in the coming endeavors. And I really have no one but myself to blame for it. I was in a very bad way with my mental health. I sought help but it didn't improve after several months I decided to end my life something which I'd had thoughts of and had struggled with for a long time. I ensured I did everything I thought possible. I left a note apologizing to my family. I was found in the early hours collapsed by a stranger who sought medical attention. I don't remember this. What I do remember is waking up after nearly 3 weeks in an induced coma with the deepest feeling of shame and guilt in IQ. The nurses and doctors were amazing as were my family and friends. I was just deeply ashamed of the pain I caused. I still struggle with my mental health but I do a lot of volunteer work to support those in similar situations to prevent people from acting on the thoughts of an ill mind. I'm glad I lived. I have anxiety and depression. Everything makes me ashamed like never before. Just be ashamed of feeling ashamed then. Easy life hack. I was watching my nephew one day, he was probably 4 or 5, and we were playing in the living room. We were play fighting, and he had a toy shotgun that he was pretending to shoot at me with. He shot me and I fell on the floor and pretended to be dead, and he hit me in the face with this toy shotgun. I got mad and yelled at him, took the shotgun away and put it in another room. When I came back into the living room he was still sitting on the floor crying. He was too young to really know better, and I think more than anything I hurt his feelings when I yelled at him. I still think about that sometimes, and every time I do I still feel like absolute shit. That was like 10 or 12 years ago. 4 year olds are old enough to know better than to hit people and they are old enough to engage in symbolic play which means they know that shooting someone with a toy gun and smashing someone in the face for e are different. Sounds like he got overexcited and crossed the play fight real aggression boundary. Did you handle it well? No, not really. Did you do anything to be ashamed of by yelling at a kid for being violent? No, not really. It was usually an action taken during an angry outburst. Now that I'm older, I try to just brush things off, but when I do get angry, I try to remember that I can make it much worse. I just wanted to say that I see a lot of comments here about when people were younger. And, I hope a lot of you know that you were a kid and kids do things and act in ways that may seem odd or embarrassing in hindsight. But, you were just a kid, be kind to yourself. I have bad anxiety and depression and things have been tough with my SO. And instead of seeing her in a moment and being there for her I decided to leave for the night but ultimately came back 30 minutes later which made her feel like I abandoned her. I assumed she wanted complete space when really she wanted me. I was too panicked completely overwhelmed and breaking emotionally during the argument to see it at the time. I probably fucked it beyond repair. If I was her I would really want you to tell me that. Currently sort of ashamed of myself. I just can't seem to bring myself to go on dating sites, mostly low self-esteem and body image, despite the fact I'm incredibly lonely. I've created a problem for myself and refuse to solve it. I need help but I don't know what form would be best. Dating sites are brutal no matter who you are. If you're feeling your self-esteem is low then you might not be ready for it, which is fine. I would suggest focusing on developing ties to your community and pouring into relationships that aren't romantic in nature. 
having a net of other relationships is invaluable and will provide a source of stability when you do jump into dating. Just before I was married, I work out almost every day and I take care of my intake of foods. Now I am the fattest I have ever been in my life. Long commute to workplace and doing part time job at night made it hard to fill in time on gym or even at home exercises. Motivation is lacking as well. I don't even want to meet most of my friends and family members. I just want to be acknowledged by my wife that I have been working hard for both of us, but I don't know why it is hard for her to say thank you. My current job is just average. Nothing to look forward to, and a lot of menial tasks. Good thing is, I am changing to a new job next month, and will be living closer to my new workplace so I am setting new workout routines. Hopefully it will develop into a habit. Every time I think someone is talking to waving at me so I respond only to find out it was meant for the person behind me. When I was a young teen I had a pet rat and a pet hamster. The hamster was a bit psycho and ate her babies. She was generally aggressive. The rat was a sweetie, though. My mom got diagnosed with asthma and realized that she was allergic to our rodents. My grandpa lived next door but was wintering down south, so my mom had me move the rodents to his house. It then became my responsibility to take care of them at another house. I did okay at first, but I started going over to see them less and less. It got bad to the point that I forgot to give them enough water and they both died. I almost felt relieved when it happened because it was becoming a hassle for me, but I felt guilty as well. Now with my adult brain. I look back and my heart aches for those poor rodents that were lonely and scared without enough water. I wish I had communicated with my parents that I wasn't up for the job anymore so that we could have sold them or given them away even. I just wasn't thinking rationally about the situation back then. As a resident of the northeast, coconuts that grow naturally don't exist by us or if they do are very rare. Went down to FL. Miami, as a 28 year old guy. Went to Walmart just for some late night snacks. Didn't even think about the situation but I saw a coconut under a palm tree in the parking lot. I got excited so I ran over to it to pick it up and see if I can hear water inside. I shook it up. And whatever was inside went all over my face and chest when I shook it. It was either rotten beyond belief or filled with legit piss shit. Whatever it was smelled so beyond disgusting. I ended up getting the flu a few days after. The shame comes from no so much better than to pick up a random fucking coconut but letting curiosity take control. I am not a fan of coconuts at all so I really never picked one up at a supermarket. At least you didn't fuck the coconut. When I was 14, I was talking to a guy on the phone and my family is super strict. Looking back it was sketchy how I met him, online, but I was young and dumb. It wasn't anything inappropriate, just about our days. My family caught me talking to the guy and I lied that it was my friend's friend. They got upset and told my friend, the girl, never to call my home or hang out with me ever again. It gave her a bit of emotional stress as her mom overheard her crying and it has been 15 years since and I still feel guilty on how I just threw her under the bus. I vowed that I would never do that ever again in my life but the guilt stays. I was 14, my mom just left and I was trying to figure out how to pay bills. I was so hungry and one night while counting the till I stole 20 bucks. The manager caught me and I was so ashamed. He knew my story and let me keep the money for food. I lied most of my life, mostly white lie. Then I realized how it eroded at my soul and how all the nonsense and stress in M life was my own fault so I promised myself that I'd never lie again. Trigger warning sir. I was sad from the age of 6-14 by an older kid in the neighborhood. Everyone loved and adored him, including me because I thought that's what love looked like. He also abused my brother who was a couple years older than me. When my brother turned 12 I saw that it was affecting him in the worst of ways and I was nervous he was going to hurt himself. So I told our abuser that if he left my brother alone and just messed with me that I would never tell a single person. I swore it on my soul. 
he left him alone. But my brother thinks that when he stopped with him, he stopped with me and was so relieved. He doesn't know this guy raped me at the age of 13. We are 48 and 50 now and he still doesn't know. I went and found healing, found God, went to counseling and live the most beautiful life. My bro went down the other path and still can't really even talk about the abuse much. He is still so there. When I forgot the birthday of my mother. Not because she would be sad, she is a terrible person but because of that day I felt like I wasn't better. When I was 10 my dad made me take off my pants at JCPenney to try on a pair of pants. I had underwear, but I was crying cause I felt embarrassed stripping in a fucking department store lol. I kept trying to tell him I need a dressing room but he just got angrier. I'm a dude btw. That was wrong of him. Just so you have someone else confirm if. The shame should be his. 